Okay, so take the situation. You're looking at your analytics and you find that your last video garnered more than 1,000 views. And because of the relative success of the last video, you start feeling the pressure of trying to come up with new content. Okay, so maybe I should stop talking about myself in this manner. But the bottom line is that I had trouble trying to come up with new content, so what did I do? I went to bed and I took a nap, and while I was in that relaxed state, I had a couple of ideas in mind. But the one that stuck with me was the one that was staring at me right in the face, which was sleep. And by the time I woke up, I immediately knew what this video was going to be. So since this video is going to be about sleep, I decided to use footage of me sleeping as the backdrop for this video. I mean, it's basically free real estate, right? So here's a video about how being in a restful state can positively affect your creativity. Many creative people in history have had problems with creating new content. People in history such as Salvador Dali, Thomas Edison, and Dmitry Mendeleev practically use some sort of relaxed state to induce some sort of creativity. But the example that I want to talk about right now comes from the book The Creative Curve by Alan Garnett, in which he mentions Paul McCartney when he was still writing songs for the Beatles. So the story goes like this. One night in his apartment in 1965, Paul woke up from a melody that he heard in his dream. And afterwards, he came immediately to his piano and started playing what he had heard. Afraid that he had subconsciously heard someone else's song and that he would end up with a plagiarism suit, he approached several singer-songwriters to gather some validation on whether or not the melody was original. And of all the people that he went to, all of them gave the same response. The melody was truly original. And the song that I'm talking about is Yesterday, which went on to set records as the most covered song in history. So how did Paul come up with a record-setting melody while he was dreaming, and what can we learn from this? One thing that we have to consider is that we can't say that he created the song out of nothing. Because there's a myth regarding creativity that says that creativity can only come from geniuses that create something out of nothing through magic, but this is simply not the case. If you knew the history of the Beatles, you would know that before they wrote original songs, they performed in pubs and did covers of other artists, and because of this, Paul's mind subconsciously took the underlying melodies of hundreds of songs and made something that was truly of value. You can see this if you compare the chord progressions of Yesterday with Ray Charles' rendition of Georgia On My Mind, as you can see the similarities between the two songs. Now, if you want to explain why Paul McCartney had this sudden moment of creativity during his dream, we must first understand the mechanism behind deep sleep. Every time we enter deep sleep, we enter a REM cycle. REM meaning rapid eye movement, which literally happens in this state. Your eyes move rapidly like so. It was first previously thought that when we sleep, the activity of the brain gets lower, but after first seeing the electroencephalogram hooked up to somebody sleeping, scientists found out that this was not the case. In fact, when we enter a deep sleep, the brain activity plunges in the first hour, but then during the second hour, the brain waves have a sudden transient rise before falling again, thus making a REM cycle. Now, this sudden rise in brain activity lasts for about an average of 10 minutes before going down again, but when it goes back up again, it lasts longer with each rise in brain activity. So when we're in the REM stage of sleep, our brains mimic the activity of our wakeful states. This is why, for example, when we think about a tree when we're awake, we end up dreaming of walking through a forest, or when we have a euphoric state while we're awake, you dream of flying. So in Paul's case, he had years and years of prior experience in listening and writing music that his brain made him dream up of a new creative record-breaking melody. So what do the studies say about this? A study done in 2002 observed 16 subjects. The research group made all the subjects fall asleep and were selected based on their sleeping states. One group was woken up while during a non-REM state, while another group was woken up during a REM state. And their performances were compared by making them answer anagram word puzzles. And the results? The subjects who were woken up during the REM state answered the puzzles 32% better than those who had come from a non-REM state. 
And so what can we conclude from this study? Well, you might have figured this out by now, but the deeper you come from sleeping, the more creative you are. And this concept says a lot about the saying, sleep on a problem. So whenever you're stuck late at night trying to solve a problem, the best thing you could ever do is to just fall asleep, and by the time you wake up, you might end up finding the answer. So I've shown you the Paul McCartney study, and I've shown you the research. Now, what's the mechanism behind the creativity that arises during restful states? In her book, A Mind for Numbers by Dr. Barbara Oakley, she explains two ways of thinking, which are the focus mode and the diffuse mode. So think of a pinball machine, where you pull the plunger and the ball bounces on the pins and moves across the board. So in this model, the ball represents your train of thought and the pins represent your ideas, such as your idea of what a multiplication table is, or your idea of the physics formulas that you know about. During the focus mode, the ball bounces on a certain number of pins, but only at a limited area. And when the ball bounces back and forth only on certain pins, not moving on to any areas of the board, that means you're stuck in a problem. But during the diffuse mode, the number of pins get dialed down and the ball can move freely across the board. In other words, your train of thought can make connections and move towards unconventional ideas, making creative solutions to difficult problems. This is why being in a state of rest can help you be more creative. You stop focusing on the ideas that you're used to, and your thoughts can spread across unconventional ideas that might be useful to you. And how do you access these states? Well, the focus mode of thinking is pretty easy to access. Once you lay your attention on something, the focus mode is pretty much turned on. And how do you turn on the diffuse mode? Well, you just gotta relax. This is an explanation as to why mental block happens. When you're answering a test and you forget what the answer is, the best thing you could ever do is to just relax. And this goes back to the pinball analogy. When you're stressed or focused, your thoughts are only localized on one area of your mind, relying on a certain number of ideas. But when you relax, your train of thought can move freely across your mind, giving you access to the information that's stored deeply. An example that I want to give is from this one episode of Naruto, when Shikamaru fights Tamari. He can't use his shadow possession jutsu because of the limited shadowed area, so what does he do? He relaxes and then he finds the answer to the problem, and so he uses the environment to his advantage and ends up capturing Tamari. And this concept isn't new at all. People in history have been using restful states to conjure up new ideas like Salvador Dali, Dmitry Mendeleev, and Paul McCartney and Albert Einstein. But of course, being in a restful state alone doesn't guarantee that you're always going to come up with new ideas. Just because you're going to take a nap doesn't mean you're going to come up with a cure for COVID-19 by the time you wake up. You need to build up a library of information before you could take that information and create something new. So when you're in a restful state, you're bound to make connections that you never would have thought of. So again, if you're tasked with a problem in mind, the best course of action would just be to sleep on it, because by the time you wake up, you might end up saying Eureka. 